Keiko Fujimori insists if she wins the next presidential elections in Peru, it is she who will govern, not her father, the jailed but still influential former leader. I listen to his opinions, but I make the decisions. Sometimes I don't agree with him. Keiko Fujimori has set out to establish herself as her own woman in Peruvian politics. At 35, she's already a congresswoman at the head of her own party and a front runner for the April vote. Educated in the U.S., she began political life at a young age, serving as the first lady after her parents' divorce. But it's her surname which has got her this far. Her staunch support of her father, Alberto Fujimori, throughout his legal battles, has won her both friends and enemies. He was convicted of corruption and authorizing death squad killings as part of a dirty war against suspected left-wing rebels. His legacy still stirs strong feelings in Peru. I mean, in no time, uh, Fujimori would be freed and, and he would play a, a major, almost a determinant role uh, in, in, in the next government. High-profile figures such as the Nobel Prize-winning novelist Mario Vargas Llosa have also held up warning flags. If the daughter of the dictator who has been jailed for being a criminal and a thief has the possibility of being president of Peru, I will be one of those Peruvians who will try to stop it by all possible legal means. But like her father, Keiko is popular with Peru's poorest. Many here credit the former leader with stabilizing the country during a period of economic turmoil and a violent left-wing insurgency. And his daughter is inheriting that support. I decided to run for president after I visited poor communities and I saw the hope in their eyes, and that they were counting on me. If she wins, she'd be Peru's first woman leader and its youngest. But critics warn she'd be little more than a puppet for her father, who for now is held at this special forces police base. Many would prefer not to run the risk.